Okay, what we got here is my FT60R right here. And it's got a quarter wave two meter wire antenna on it. This is the insert from the Yesu rubber duck that came with the radio with the rubber stripped off of it. Okay. And a $3 tape measure I got at the local ham fest. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make a tape measure antenna for this thing that could be folded and rolled up and out of the way for pack use. And what we're going to do is cut a length of this and attach it to that and make a uh, flexible antenna for it. This is the choke that's used for the two meter portion of this band, this antenna. This antenna is actually a two meter and a 70 centimeter antenna. So basically what we're gonna end up using is we're gonna solder that to our tape measure portion of the antenna. We may use this with epoxy to give it rigidity because if I tried to solder that to the tape measure, it's just gonna melt this nylon and it'll make a big mess. The uh, helicoil here is going away. It's gonna be cut because it's awfully dirty and I don't think I could solder to it. Okay, here's the antenna base. The helical, which is above it, has been cut off. And I ground it down and uh, burnished off the, looks like chromium covering on it, or nickel anyway, <clears throat> and cut the wire loose from the uh, choke that's there. Got plenty of wire to solder onto the base of our antenna. And the uh, combination of that nylon spacer and the uh, bottom of the helical there will be used to epoxy the new antenna to it. Okay, here's the section cut out, approximately uh, 20 inches long. The length of this antenna should be around 1 foot 8 inches, 1 foot 7 inches thereabouts, depending on the frequency target. However, I want to leave a little bit so I can cut and trim it if I wanted to. And the next stop is going to be cleaning the varnish off of this and soldering it on. Okay, this is the lead soldered on to the tape. I cleaned it off really good on the uh, sanding wheel on my bench grinder, including the copper lead since it had a layer of varnish on it. It took a small propane torch, seen here, bought at Harbor Freight for next to nothing. They last a little while and then they pot out, but they're good for little projects like this. And so I'm gonna let it cool and manipulate it in place and we'll be ready to epoxy the assembly together. Okay, now it's all soldered together and ready to go. As you can see, I took off the barrel right there because it's got nylon parts and I didn't want it melting. I also used uh, Plumber's uh, Tinning Flux, shown in the upper left there. It uh, worked better to get everything to solder together and a, a lot of heat, but just being careful not to overheat things and melt others. So at this point, it's just a matter of giving it a really good solid dose of two-part epoxy is the next step and from there we should be able to test it and uh, paint it also. One other thing I did is that I cut a second piece as an experimental counterpoise. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bore a hole in one end so I can use that over the threaded portion of the antenna mount and experiment with it as a counterpoise to see how uh, much better uh, and clearer range I can get with some of the farther repeaters around here. Chances are what I'll do is I'll bore a hole in the center of it and one on one end. That way I can mount it in the center and on the end just to experiment. Okay, here's the almost completed antenna. You can see the length of it. And down here you can see I didn't skimp on the epoxy here. I want that thing to stay on there and very rigid. And uh, if you were gonna do this, I would use the stock antenna, mainly because the threads for this thing are cut much better and makes a much uh, stronger mount. Uh, I love my diamond quarter wave, but the threads on it are cut in such a manner that you can feel it's kind of floppy when it goes on there. I didn't make a counterpoise because using a drill to drill a hole any big bigger than an eighth of an inch 
will tear the metal. I have to find another way to bore a hole through it. And the clearance between the volume on off knob and the antenna mount is so close that <clears throat> it would interfere. So I'm thinking a wire tiger tail will probably do it. And of course a coat of black paint. The nice thing is it rolls up in a nice little ball. Uh, makes it very compact for uh, putting in a backpack and you don't have to worry about it. Something like a nice expensive diamond antenna taking a permanent bend like this one is. You could see it. So once I'm done, this is going to be my go-to antenna. Basically, it'll roll up and fit into a prescription bottle and um, be out of the way. I did a preliminary test, although my battery is starting to die, and it seems to be as promising as my diamond. So I'm going to uh, charge my battery, do some final tinkering with it, and uh, see what the finished product produces. Okay, this is the finished product. I painted the antenna with uh, flat olive drab paint, mainly because that's all I had to kind of subdue the yellow of that tape, which quite frankly was pretty hideous. Uh, I wasn't able to use a counterpoise with the tape measure uh, material, mainly because in order to drill a hole and have it function properly, it'd be just too close to the middle volume knob and it would interfere with it greatly. So. What you see below it there is my wire tiger tail that I'll use. I've tried it a few times and I have to say it works at least as good as my uh, quarter wave diamond antenna. So that's promising. And the nice thing is it'll roll up and fit into a large medicine jar or bottle if you wish. And um, so there you have it. Very compact that way. And it, uh, when you take it out of its uh, container, it just springs up to the shape like that. And, uh, yeah, no worries. So I'm taking it with me tomorrow into the Mazazal Wilderness, and I'll probably use it out there. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, drop me a line, kf7rcm at yahoo.com. Thanks for watching.